Councillors, um, as is, has become um, part of our traditional commencement of our year or our council um, sitting for the first time, uh, I've invited uh, an engineer who's organised for us, um, a member of the uh, Bark uh, Christian community to come along and lead us in prayer this morning, uh, Mrs Bev Church, so thank you very much for that and um, also very confident. on behalf of the custodian. So um, thank you to both of those ladies for their presence and I'll hand over to you, Mrs. Church. We can all be outstanding. <laughs> to the beautiful world that you've given us. Land and property of the people we have come here to serve. With respect for each of our fellow councillors, staff, and for the people in our region. This we ask in Jesus' name. Of passing of some um, former previous residents of Park Hall, uh, Eastern, uh, Mr. John Jack Cecil King, OAM, former Park Hall and Shire Council CEO, Mrs. Gwen Norman, Mrs. Jean Thorne, and Sister Mary Dolan Diamond, uh, who is a former Sister of the Sacred Heart Church here on a number of occasions, but also. Um, in our course to observe. Thank you. So I'll now turn Mary, please, Liz. Jamie here, the district manager Alpha is an apology, that's correct. Respects to the traditional owners, the immigrant people of the land on which we I acknowledge and pay respects to my traditional Bidjara ancestors and my descendants, the Thompson and the Fraser families, who have been custodians of this beautiful country since the beginning of the 1900s. I would also like to acknowledge and pay my respects 
to the Indigenous and non-Indigenous Elders, both past, present and emerging, and extend my respects to the Barcourt and Regional Councillors and staff here today for your first meeting for My name is Kerry Thompson, and I am a very proud Aboriginal South Sea a Vidura Karakara descendant. It is again an honour and a privilege to be asked to open your first meeting for 2022 with an acknowledgement of country. So I sincerely thank the Barcourt Region for inviting me. I would like to congratulate and thank you all for the 2021 year in which you have served under difficult circumstances, although many achievements have been made along the way. I would like to wish each and every one of you the best for vision and the values set down for the Barcorden Regional Council and for 20 fair and equitable decisions are made to each of the five communities that you represent. A proactive, trustworthy, inclusive is a successful council. And that a quote from Henry Ford, observations, has resonated the past two years of this council and the communities you serve. Progress. Working together is success. So in closing, we say good luck to you all in 2022 and keep up the great work as you continue in your roles to the best of your ability for yet another challenging, an unpredicted year. Thank you. Thank you, Kerry. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Kerry. I, think, uh, I said uh, in a meeting I had with some representatives of the Central West Aboriginal Corporation that that thing concludes our third um, uh, formal acknowledgement of country. Fourth, sorry, Angela, for correcting me. Um, and each one of them is something that we can draw from. And Kerry, um, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to really look into what it is that we do and, and be here to provide us with that. And Mrs Church, um, thank you for leading us in prayer and uh, to take the time we take to reflect on what it is that we do. And it's easy to get lost in what we have to do, but a little bit of time to reflect on the broader um, impacts of our decisions at the commencement of each formal meeting is very well received and we're grateful for your presence here today. Mm -hmm. Angela? Thank you. We're welcome to stay if you'd like to, but yeah, we do have an open gallery, but if you're, no, we'll leave if you're leaving right <laughs> over there. Thank All right, Brett's favourite part of the meeting, prescribed conflicts of interest. I'll start with the Council of Peoples. Ms Mayor, I've got a private conflict of interest in through. This is just a uh, past meeting, and I will leave the room. Is that the only one? And he prescribed, yes, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Gleeson. Councillor Hanson. Councillor Hanson. Councillor Arthur. Mr. Mayor, I inform this meeting that I have prescribed conflict of interest in the following matters as defined section 150 EI of the Local Government Act. The nature of my interest is response to council. I have a previous declared prescribed conflict of interest as a close associate of mine.
sort and the nature of my relationship is that they are my employer. And secondly, 3.37, the Building Better Regions Fund, round six, um, out of an abundance of I'll declare a prescribed conflict of interest as a close associate of mine is likely to supply goods and or services to the Blackwood Regional Council for the works out of a successful funding application. Um, and that's the same close associate model in transport. Any councillor present believe any other councillor present has a prescribed conflict of interest? Or have raised or are aware of. Or, or Association uh, is a there for a gala night at Emerald for uh, racing awards, so I'll declare a conflict there. In decision made on that, so I'll leave Uh, I'll move that you stay in the room for the receipt discussion of that report because there's no decision or voting required on. Second up, Councillor Gleeson, discussion or debate? Just to be what report, sorry? 342, the project progress report. Okay. Made a discussion. Those in favour? Uh, carry 5 0. <laughs> Councillor People, let me ask you, you mentioned two projects there. Um, discussion on those particular projects. There is only the two, there's the rec park and the Port Street footpath, is that correct? That you believe you have a, a D, uh, PCOA? That I found, Mr Mayor, have you? No, I'm not aware of it either. I just, if that's the list, I'll just ask councillors to hold discussion on that till the end of that agenda item. You can leave and we'll discuss those two if there's any need to. As far as I would find, Mr Mayor, yeah. Right. For you, Mr Mayor, on that point, at, at what point? We'll move towards subsequent decision, perhaps. Around where we can draw a line in the sand, and what might help us there is the department will be here to provide. Explicit training on these conflict of interest matters is a February. I was a little bit on some of that stuff after some conversation I've had with him. Yeah. Um, the reverse of the way we've gone, we've been abundantly careful. Still hasn't helped some of us, um, but that doesn't mean that the complaints that are against us are right either. So. And also, Mr. Mayor, just to clarify, would Councillor declarable be prescribed as he's a, you're an executive for the racing or? Oh, yes, I am. But not the, not the committee that runs that event, are you? You're on the advisory board. They I'm don't not, run that. I'm not on any committee that runs that event. No. That's run by yep. a private yep. enterprise. Because I'm president of the Central West Racing Association. 
I have somebody please move that we receive the minutes of the 7 December meeting. Well, Hanson, Councillor Gleeson, those in favour, 7 to 0. Any alterations? Do I have a resolution to confirm, please? Councillor Peoples, second up. Councillor. Five up, seven zero. If any councillors or staff present have a petition, three, two, one. Councillor Plum, second of Councillor Peoples, those in favour. Sorry, did you mean to move that? I saw you. I'd like to retract your movement. No, you'll accept that. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Peoples moved to scratch his iPad before he moved the last resolution. So we'll see. You've got to be quick on the trigger tonight. You're not an auctioneer, Renault. Part time job, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I have been known to take a few from the gate post, yes. Uh, I think the most important thing to point out, uh, oh well, I will mention that the State Oversight Group met, um, which is a pest weed management role that I fill on behalf of. Oh, SOG, as it's called. Uh, there's, there's, without boring you on the individualistic details, there was a number of projects that were brought to that committee that I thought were relatively stand on what was given to us and it doesn't impact us. We've had received reports at this meeting before around participation. Observation of the numbers and there was some research dollars allocated to that. I expressed a bit of concern about that. Well considered as perhaps it need to be for these broader western and, and northern areas into the Gulf. Urbane national parks rather than broad range. Um, so that, that's an area. Disaster management group meetings uh, that they take up one line item in that report, but there was a number of um, meetings held both formally and on the sidelines of that regarding a, a crisis at the Alpha MPHS uh, last week. Uh, that matter that has been resolved within 24 hours. I guess the fullness of time is the only way to truly know uh, the impact of that, certainly in the next. Debrief on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, Councillor Peoples. Please, for that event, Councillor Arthur, if you'd like to join us. No ambulance availability out of that facility for a considerable period of time. They haven't told us how long, but the hospital and ambulance for emergency paramedic response was on emergency, was on bypass for a considerable period of time, which is of concern to me, uh, that, that that facility, whether it's COVID related, um, goes <coughs> bypass because it is a very long way from Tambo to Clermont or Anarchy to Barcaldon, which are the four. 
QIS stations um, or, or, or Aramac. Life and death. So both as employers of council staff, but uh, members of the community, I think that that was unacceptable that that, no, I don't think, I repeat that, I know that it was unacceptable for that um, facility to be on bypass any period of time, but certainly for the period of time that it was. Now, fortunately, I'll give credit where it's due, it was actually a uh, in that period of time, it was in Alpha Township, uh, is the information I have. Paramedic response was generated from Bar Calden and uh, the repatriation happened and it all went well. So uh, I'm not going to pretend it was tested, it was actually tested whilst it was on bypass. And we seem to have got away with it. There's um, only QAS that keeps saying that there's not enough demand for. Uh, the only people that say that are the people that don't live there. So um, one day we will have highlighted by me several times in service provision, uh, highlighted by this disaster. Attended the men's shed Christmas function, a number of councillors attended that with me. Um, what was really pleasing to see was the um, number of men's shed people from all over. There was a massive crowd from Alpha and two or three reps, maybe four from Blackhall, um, uh, or four or five actually. So it was a really good afternoon and um, it was warm, but not as warm as if they were doing it today. Glad you uh, seem to enjoy Jericho over there as well. Yeah, that's right. So uh, a truly regional men's shed <coughs> gathering, which uh, they're promising to try and do more often this year than, than simply just at Christmas, which will be really good for the men and women in the men's sheds. The budget workshop yesterday, which was a really good long session. Any questions? Management report. Second of Councillor Rogers, those in favour? Harry. Yes, well, I just want to point out something before I throw to the Board of Committee Chair or the CEO. Um, officer's report, and also on the bottom of the first page of the letter, a, um, an increase in the audit, the final audit fee from that that was estimated in the external audit plan. Uh, that was an agreed to figure, I'm informed. Both on both, from both parties or, or over runs in time. So yes, council was a little, had some issues and I'll ask Brett to explain more about that in providing the material on time. Uh, but there was also some issues from the external auditors in meeting deadlines as well. So the Whilst that <clears throat> written material you have received in your report signed by uh, a representative of QAO identifies that there were information not provided by us, uh, there was also information or time gaps from the external auditors, so there was fault on both sides there. Uh, <coughs> the um, so the auditors completed their um, report, which was presented to the audit committee um, on the right to have our audit completed by the end of October. Just an extension of time from the minister of one month to enable the audit to be completed. Um, so the auditors so um, so 
the FOIA. Um, solving that, we. So um, when they arrived on site, they expected all those reconciliations to be ready. But that extended the time. Fixed and you know, obviously that takes. Um, this year, just an external IT specialist to the system, so that's why you see. Um, Policies, um, review access controls, and um, free testing. You see that reported on the asset registers. Um, another issue was. Uh, Reconciling those, so under the new accounting, it's on an accrual basis. So previously, we just if you received a grant in the year, it goes in as income, and whatever you spend goes out as expenditure. The requirements you have to relate the grant to when the money was spent. So in relation to the unspent money, if we've done work that we haven't claimed from the grant. So, so um, Is we're trying to equip for the year or that we receive during the year, so we have to go and match those up with the expenditure. The auditors want to see when. And as time goes, Bills come in from the 30th of June, you know, they come in in August, and then they've got it back down. So there was a fair bit of work in that. They also did an audit of our roads to recovery. Um, the time. Went through that process, it's very extensive. As you can see, also the matters from previous years, we've resolved. We've resolved um, 14 issues from previous years, so that's one progress, one good thing that we've, we're slowly clearing. There's only one issue remaining. Um, Sets. Um, um, from the audit committee, do you have anything you'd like to add or further identify? Um, 
this regional council knows um, the extra items like the IT and that. that For you, Mr. Mayor, the one do we have a time frame? Solved or we think it will be resolved? The, all the issues need to be resolved by The aim is to have those resolved and then done. The young ones will close The bit they're requiring that the grants procedure is that you said that's going to add to the workload. Um, Simplify things down the track, or have they just made it more complicated? The worst thing that happens is getting grants in advance. That's oh, The problem is it's not only them, it's the feds. As soon as the disaster happens pretty well, you know, they can be seen to be spending money. <coughs> Which I get to. And there's probably some councils and some in this areas where that, like well, we're talking scales of tens of millions of dollars, there's some damage bills can run to hundreds of millions. No one's got that sort of cash flow. Probably having a couple of hundred million to start a couple of billion dollar job might actually be a bad idea. Like, so there's probably pros and cons, but from a pure accounting point of view, it's money. Things, it's probably not a bad idea. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just, ever since I've been on council, I think reporting has just got tougher and tougher, you know, over the years. Uh, Probably since accrual first came in, it has been a start, and it just seems to keep it up. It's not only the audit, it's Australian. Well, it starts with the international accounting standards. know exactly what they want. <coughs> Probably wouldn't hurt the idiot who's saying these are all the things we'd like on the day we turn up. Well, theoretically, they do. You can see the external audit plan, but you can never tell, can you, Mr. Manager Lawrence, which particular part of the external audit plan they're going to be overly <coughs> attentive to. Tell you what they're going to want, but then sometimes they want a sample size of one in what? Two, but 2,000, other times they'll want one in 100, won't they? Or 
it may be vouchers for this or it might be purchase orders this year or it could be like they'll they won't surprise you technically but you'll never know which area that they're going to drill down to until they open their laptops in the old boardroom over there and then it's good box then as they start reviewing those items and they say oh we need that sort of feeds them to ask for. You get the same order, the same order over a number of years. Yeah, you, you, you don't really know. that They will have a broad <coughs> but they will be particularly interested in a very niche part of it. They'll change their focus. They're looking for the things that can expose you all the time. And it's not, it's not by your capacity of not doing it, it's because it's all, as Brett said, you then things come out, things, you know, things get passed to expose. Well, all the report done. because it is a regulation that they I don't know Three, two, three. Possibly the, the wording of, of part A where it says can only be accessed by persons and then in B we go in the event that so to word the uh, I guess it's the same as the health statewide health declarations yeah. and say private function, the same venue can be used access if vaccinated, whereas if one unvaccinated person attends, then it reverts back to a maximum of 20. The only reason I proposed that caveat This is the meeting room for our disaster management group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the chance that a essential officer, I cannot think that there would be, but just on the off chance that an essential officer is required who's not vaccinated, that caveat would say they can come in, but we'll be limited to 20 people then. Whereas if we're all vaccinated, we can have the full gallery back, we can have eight or 10 people in here visiting, watching. Um, would this receive? Deputations. This is a room that we receive visitors from Brisbane. So, are you thinking about the fact that I've? It's just the like 
only be active. It's a definite, it's not a should, right. shall, it's a cannot. Like it, it probably be in pedantic, but it's just. Well, we can change it. And, and, and Designate I, I appreciate that the health department and the state government are saying language. Yeah. <coughs> language. Say it can only be accessed, but then we have a but if. They contradict say. Well, to a, if you read those in proper English, yes. they contradict each other all the way through it. But I think <laughs> we can clarify this. If you, so we can leave the it designates chambers as a fully vaccinated venue. Access, so with access instead of that can only be. Sorry, yes, leave that, don't delete it. Um, so with general access, with unrestricted access, unrestricted, as, oh, unrestricted number of people. No. By people, people, people. Like, yeah. That's what you're trying to clarify that if they're vaccinated, there is no restriction on numbers. But if there is one not vaccinated, you've got a restriction on numbers. Yeah, so. By unlimited numbers of people. If that a person is required to enter who is not fully vaccinated, then the venue will revert to a limit of 20 persons. Is that slightly less? Should it be A or any? <laughs> That's less contradictory, Dan. Councillor Arthur. Um, basically, put so many people in, but I understand the. Well, the it, it is probably better than saying. Thing would be to put that you could use density. Of uh, density requirements, but I think that confuses it more. So you could actually take out unrestricted because it does have restricted access to this building, like you can't. Vaccinated venue with access. With access, Mr. Lee? This for an unlimited number of people. It's not a restriction on numbers. Yeah, that might be. Because unlimited means we can try and put 600 people in here. For an unrestricted number of people, we can verify that they have received. Yeah. yeah. This will apply to all councillors, uh, stations, whole works. The app at the door will be actually. Well, certainly not for the next three years.
Councillors um, probably wonder why, and there's lots of reasons why, but I think it's important that we show um, there are a number of small businesses in our council area who have had to operate under this environment now since the 17th of December. Uh, I don't see us as any different to them. Exemption. A number of other levels of government have wrestled with the decision to require members of parliament or other councils, councillors to be vaccinated. I'm not personally in favour of someone. But I do think where they are gathering with members of a leadership team who will manage a crisis outbreak, that there needs to be some understanding of what protection is available. We often have management meetings in here when we're not on Zoom. So this provides some solidarity with our community, our businesses, and probably also provides the CEO uh, with some, I would say leverage, but signalling to other elements of our workforce that we're not setting a standard for sections of our workforce that we're not prepared as councillors to follow ourselves. There are elements of our workforce who work in aged care actually a requirement to be vaccinated to go to work. Uh, their workplaces are fully vaccinated workplaces and have been now for a couple of weeks. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. So uh, I think resolution is important and the decision will show that we are taking the threat seriously. I'm happy to move that, Councillor Plum. Will be seconded by Councillor Plump. Question, Councillor Police. To me, you just, item B, you just said that that is actually a requirement. B. No, it's a caveat. No, it's not a requirement. That's what Queensland Health recommend when you have a facility where a person does enter, then you have to limit to either one person per two square metres or 20, whichever is the lesser. In this case, 20 is the lesser because slightly more than 20 people in this room. Yeah, about not putting it there. They're just, I'll give you some examples of what may need to happen here. This might be the only room available one day for to be used as what the staff determine as the green room. The other room just could be taken and, and gathering. Um, I'd hate to see them be forced to use in a, a substandard room simply because we're very prescriptive about this. Um, very far and few between perhaps one, you know, at our disaster management, we may need a briefing from somebody who's not vaccinated, whether it be a senior SES official um, or an agency that hasn't mandated vaccine. We may actually need them to be in the room. We'll just obviously have to limit how many other people are in here with them. I'm not expecting that it be used as a get out of jail for uh, And so that hence the word required in my motion. They're not required, then they're not permitted inside the building. Thank you. Three one. Can I have somebody move with the threats report, please? Seconded, Councillor Arthur. Does it matter? Seven zero. Pretty cool item in terms of our supply. So, over. 
Ireland's water restrictions for a couple of days uh, until that was fixed. So that has been resolved. Uh, the uh, contract repairing the electronics is due to be here Thursday um, or Friday. So you leave on Brisbane on Thursday. Alfred Jericho as well, so we're working on finding solutions. Treatment plants as well. Is the problem with the treatment plant or the balls or the district? So, once again, electrics. So, we're just trying to get to the bottom of that. Those problems. Enterprise bargaining that will commence on the 1st of February. Opening. Waratah Coal, the in that application. Let's correspondence a bit later on that. And boundaries, um, I have documents which I supplied to them before Christmas. So. Late, there will be some action on that. Um, So it's about the future of that facility. Uh, so I met with the new CEO of Central Islands Regional Council last week. Uh, Neighbouring CEOs. I had to be in Emerald for another reason, so it was a electrical problem. Do we have backup there that we can just keep a switch and a generator? Exactly is a problem. Um, our director works may no more. Um, through you, Ned. Um, also in Jericho, there were different operation to buckles and the local contractor that we've been using. Believe uh, 
solving uh, problems. I'm not sure if that's happened or not. It, it is an ongoing issue, uh, and we are looking at factory. Stuff, especially for Alpha. Jericho's kind of set up, but um, um, I did speak to our consultants and Solution. So right now, what we're doing is just this as we can. Um, it's not as again. You know, I don't understand. I'm not a professional in electricity or anything like that. But what happens? The power goes down really low, and then the pumps don't start. So, and these are the things that electricians have had a look at. Engineers are looking. We are trying to get a solution for it. Is the only problem power supply? Supply. So even if we do, that's being given for me. Even if you we do, um, that the issues like the chlorinator and that type of stuff, if the power goes down it's still going to system. So there I is... Believe this is bad. I'm not sure. Distribution of power internally within the treatment plant. So is it an internal problem or is it an external supply problem? That, but so there's no other problems. If we could stop the power, we could fix the power problem, all the water problems go away. Um, so, what are the other problems? What is it that we can't fix overnight? Because I can fix the power problem tomorrow. What it costs is about $8,000 for an automatic switching unit on a generator. The minute the volts drop under 220 volts, the generator kicks in, runs indefinitely, runs whatever it's got. Power is not an issue. Power can be fixed in five minutes. What are the other problems other than power? Because it, if it's not power, we've got $2 million. If it's a control issue, there's $2 million sitting in the bank to fix the problem. There was a... Rectifying as we go, um, so there, there, there is a process that's in place that we're, we're working with. They have a time frame. How long? Ago, sorry, I'll rip up. How long ago did they start their rectification process, and how long did it take? Okay, the rectification process was way before my time, way way before my time, and I've picked that's it up. Problem. That's part of the problem. Then. Yeah. Like it shouldn't take it more than a few months. But no, um, but just to be that um, I do know that um, um, so Simmons and Bristow did.
six generators, seven at least. One that's a little bit of a during day. Three, three significant balls, but two primary balls. The alternative is not waiting for Ergon. The alternative is us providing. The only alternative generation capacity that I'm aware of in Australia at the moment that works 24 7 is diesel fired generation. We own three of them. What we probably don't own is others. As I said, they cost a couple of thousand bucks. It fixes the problem to a point where the rest of it's minor and under. I don't need Simmons and Bristow to tell me how to fix the problem. <coughs> we shouldn't have town reservoirs going empty ever. That is a failure of council. Other concern that we need to be very careful that have the flow rate of Barcoolin to return that. It's very dangerous for councillors to get involved in operations, but I think I can't expect Ergon to fix it because Ergon, like so many other elements of government owned corporations, don't have the resources to fix every problem. How they keep the power running at all is a major. But you know, and Ergon knows there is a significant issue there that they don't know how to fix. Their answers to us, we don't know. So we can't wait for them. We need to step in, own the problem and fix it, and then work out how we can recover whatever that costs from the government because we can't keep letting towns run out of water you know, or reservoirs run low. And yes, towns have run out of water. Alpha did run out of water last year. Councillor Gleeson. No, Mr Mayor, I was, I was always going to add to that was um, similar to yours on the second day. Um, when you purchase equipment, purchase equipment that is owned and serviced by the Council, It's to me to have gun force or three units. You know, try, try and, that's my two dollars worth. Says to fix, but if the problem is power, unless we put a generator there, it isn't going to be fixed any time in the next ten years, or five years, or two months, whatever it is, until someone decides to throw millions and millions of dollars of power supply issues, which is not imminent, we need to fix the power. And we, I believe we've already got the assets to do it, we're just going to put them in place. That's not here. Mr. Mayor, I, I don't know how much overtime or manpower is involved in keeping that water running. From my way of thinking, if you spend a lot of man out of there, it's whatever. That's going to pay for the generator and save us money in the long run anyway. I don't believe. Does water treatment plants? It's, does it for a living? So, what is Simmons and Bristow done there? How much have they cost us if they're not? Well, 
Gott sei Dank. So Simmons and Bristow have been involved for a while. Yeah, there was a rectification plan put in place before he arrived by them, I assume, and it still hasn't happened. So were they rectified? That's, that's not oh, sorry, I'll repeat, it still hasn't been completed. That's true. There's a lot of things that are out, a few things that are outstanding. Um, my experience with the company is quite good. When we needed them, they were out there ASAP. They were on the job when the um, pumps blew up. So, now, the other thing occurred, the more I was away and we organised that. So the quality of work I've got no problem with. However, there are issues there that we need to go through and fix up. And as Brett said, it always points back to the power. The Simmons and Bristow report, can we be provided with a copy of that? Just out of interest. Secondly, there's a boil water. Is, it, is that related to these main issues? There is a high level of chloroform chloride in this morning when they test it. So we're just being cautious while we um, do some more testing. There's someone out there testing now as we speak. and I'll wait till we get that report and look at it. The new board process for Bark Hall and tenders close end of January. Is there a practical completion date yes. for it? It's in the documents. I can't tell you what it is. No, no, well, can we... To me, there can be a fine difference between funding needs to be done by the 30th of June and the job fee. Serviceable by the 30th of June. Councillor Blayson. Mr. Mayor, I just want to ask another question about the new board for Buck Holden. We wrote an email to um, the executive. Um, because there was an extremely intelligent contractor and we're speaking, I'm just asking about power now. His biggest problem was the pump that has been advised to go down the hole. Um, there's not a power line in Bike Alden that's got enough power running through it to run that pump. And his words to me were, if that pump goes down that hole, Oh, I mean, if the hole was was 45, 50, 50, 45 metres a second flowing out of the hole. <coughs> Now, um, I believe that the person that's looking after that tender has spoken to this person and um, is always and we, we've, and 
that was the case, and I even spoke, I spoke to this gentleman, it was before Christmas, it was before Christmas, and I advised him that um, stop anyone putting the non-conforming tender in. So, and I did pass Or equipment that possibly create power supply issues, and I hope that for us or update a bit of conductor. It's it's a long, relatively long, drawn out process. Then aren't we not potentially what we're asking the contractor? We're asking contractors to tender is also going to have extra demands on power lines. The information was passed on. Uh, you can't run. No. Uh, so, uh, until the, I suppose until the tenders close and we see what we've got, I, I really can't comment. I'll take that on board, and I have taken on board, and I've. And uh, um, it's still open, the tent is still open, so we are talking. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I just want to bring it to the table again because um, the contract is no fill, absolutely no fill. Five kilowatt motor on the pump. As he's just in layman terms, if you drill a 12 inch hole and put a 10 inch pump down a 12 inch hole, um, These things are designed by engineers that, that have Councillor Gleeson. Receive the correspondence. This is seconded to Council of Peoples. This is in favour. Discussed other than six. Uh, thank you from the but I know they're very generous community for philanthropic donation. Well done. Uh, we're aware of our as the board communiques from rapid meetings for the last two months of last year. Correspondence you would have already seen by email from uh, the Honourable Stephen Miles and motions. We still have a period of time of a relevant to take to that. Um, Yeah, the deadline is to 
it another month or two. If I sold before my time, this is the final year of that. Final phase in here, so our contribution. Three, three, three. Oh, any questions about any of that? Uh, one question to me. What's the criteria for a communication to go into that account? Considerable amount more correspondence. Sort of like, do, do we have a criteria or is it? So, one thing is anything that's addressed to council, not yeah. specifically to either myself or the CEO, that's a definite conclusion. Council. Yep. Um, and if, uh, you'd like to know about. Uh, uh, that, that don't directly. Or in my case, what exercise. Debbie is to put it in there because I usually just, if I think it's something you need to know, I don't wait for the agenda, I just usually just forward to all councillors. Or, so, um, yeah, definitely something that addresses councillors. That's why you had stuff, the last agenda had all those reports mm -hmm. because they were sent to council. And also, Mr. Mayor, this, the agendas are now public. Documents, uh, they're, um, they're the agreed to because the board meetings are can be confidential, so that's the agreed to what can be discussed. Three three three. The planning and development report. We have no NPIs in the D report. Yeah, got a bit the first time. We move that we receive the report, please. Councillor Bleeds and second Councillor Plum. Those in favour? Carried. It could be a relatively healthy year for development. Sort of how busy council particularly is, but the because the town itself, or the towns themselves, as you go through, seem to be quiet, but people. So those titles, Brett, they are financial year titles, not calendar year titles. Mm -hmm. so the first six months of this year have already outstripped by 50% 2019. Mm -hmm. Economic development, can I somebody move the economic development report? Councillor Rollins, Councillor Hanson, seconds, those in favour? Carried.
There's three items, I guess, to be brought up generally when we discuss that. Councillors aren't, but. There, uh, so that the uh, October. Meeting of Council. Um, council passed a resolution about the um, concerns about the roads in the Council. Resolution asked about additional. Believe that we can do the work with our existing resources, except for any capital works upgrade, which would require capital grant. Foundations. Um, staff, staff, thank you, this council doesn't have the ability to direct staff. Um, so, um, so, the first one is that, and we have discussed this, is that when we're calling for quotes or tenders for flood damage, that we obtain the quotes to do the maintenance in the Standard procedure. Mr. Mayor, I totally agree. We, we discussed that, but it's a good idea. I think that if, um, if there's blood damage to be done on the road, um, try and you know, I'm good with that, Mr. Mayor, as long as, you know, the area is close to town, you know, go on with Some of that too, I think this is, I think we're going to, going to be a fine line. But yeah, I do agree with it. Right. So, um, yes, and uh, probably... The second one is um, the Jericho Road. So, I recommend that the, the priority for the next. That does seem to be a problem, right? That um, because of the soil conditions, ceiling um, is ceiling is probably the only solution. <coughs> so, in the entirety, right? Uh, 
Right. Okay. So yeah. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, with priority, would you be better off looking at those sort of areas that really cost us a lot of money and actually are dangerous? Before. Floodways in general. We have a budget. We've already budgeted. Kilometers of seal three that we can afford. Three, Mr. Mayor, that when you leave by corner, the Arama can go across the creek there. The first three or four kilometers is um, is the Black Soil type road <coughs> there through. Um, I can't think of the property, but anyway, it's a Black Soil type road there, and um, yeah, if you could get across that bit in after it rains, if you can get across that bit, you can go almost drive to Jericho. It's, um, it's probably not the worst corrugated bit of road, but as far as all weather road, that, so Delmar, through, um, through the Delmar property. Okay. Need something to do? Yes. That is a priority for sealing. I think there are other roads. Um, that should be a priority for Sealy before this one. I'm happy for it to be, you know, sections that do need upgrades. But this sort of reads to me like we're going to... I think there's sections that you might do some work on here, but I don't agree with Sealy all the way from our mix. Jerry can just... ...stuff, the money we'd need to do that, and... Um, other roads that have a high priority. Non TMA than that road. No, no, if you exclude TMA, take TMA out of the equation, which road would have more traffic? So, I know it's a TMR road, but if we're going to throw funds at any road, surely it's for you know the benefit of, of road users. Uh, what I mean, council people think would be the highest traffic. This road, yeah. the sculpture truck. Yeah. Oh, the sculpture truck. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I actually think it would challenge our seasonally. Could even challenge that. Uh, for the Just, I wouldn't use traffic as the basis, that there'd be no more traffic. To, like, we wouldn't be sealing another road on the basis of traffic, is what I'm saying. You know, so priority, definitely. There's no other road that carries more traffic than that road. Traffic on a whole with your um, visitors to our area. Traffic on a whole with local people going to another centre. For, for different services. Different situation altogether. Yeah. With local usage, but the impact on road from traffic numbers would mean that road would cop the most. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, when I was doing this, I was looking at Council Road. I understood that was. Uh,
Local government can contribute to TMR roads too. We've done that in the past. You agree, Councillor Peoples, that sections of that road seal would help? Yes, I do. I said no, put it where we can all use, get some benefit when we finally hit the pitch and we're on the pitch. I agree probably to the point that I don't know, sorry, later on we'll come to you. I think uh, picking roads for seals is a dangerous job because everyone Police and individual on their roads, good at a fraction of the money in grab. A fraction of the traffic to the Aramaki. And then cuts back around to the north to go back to the lake. This from there, east. Just doesn't, doesn't require bitumen. There'd be about eight people use that road. There'd be a dozen other roads. But to elements from Del Mar through to the jump up, probably only to the jump up, but that could benefit our road. It's either sealed or a couple of those flood councillor. Some of them were repaired, but they're in a. It, they're not, they're not existent, what's left, like the concrete edging that was put in place to hold many, many years ago is now in the centre of the run, running surface. So, yeah, I I certainly, I partially agree with you, Council people, with what I'm saying. I don't think the whole area... ...some of that road, but not the entirety of them. Mr. Mayor, it's already reached like we're going to have an Aramac and seal right through. Think about if you're talking about local usage. If you look at that section from Del Mar to about the jump up, You know what I mean. Um, people, locals start to use the road, but from their back, the road's not as bad and there's not as many people use it. So, so Brett just said 3K, so what are we looking at? A million dollars? No. One hundred fifty in this year's budget already for that road. So, because we do have um, I will come to the next council meeting. Submitted our allocation request by the end of February, March. We're just getting some costs. Getting costings on how much. Six meter. Yes. Yeah, a lot of three meter. Mr. Me in the past. Thirty six. I, I do from an asset longevity point of view, six metres with shoulder construction in the last year a lot better. This is a $2.6 million in LRCIP funding to allocate. We're not talking about LRCIP. Supplement what we've already budgeted.
yeah, so start there, Mac and Stelma. Um, designer of Delma or I spoke of a baby there that was my whole I didn't get a chance to go on. I don't know that if that's within the chain it's just might doing bitumen sections on the ground. Variation occurs a lot faster on either end of that road as there too. If you just start from pitch, sealing after five, six years, you might end up a kilometer of road, 600 meters or 800 meters of road. That's something that took me. Your thoughts about the wording, council of peoples of item two. Can we just move on to count item three and then we'll we might support that or propose an alternative wording. No, um, this is another one we spoke about is that. Scheduling works. This is work to town. Yes, we've discussed this. Okay. Yes, well, this will keep going. Okay. Recommendation four. So this one, um, <laughs> Some people say we just leave them, Don't touch them, just fix them, you know, the Personally, I think this would be very beneficial. Uh, probably on a surface, there's a bit of dispute, not dispute, disagreement about the best thing for war. This occurs uh, that you know some people want the box out gravel, others prefer cement, some prefer stone. Gravel, you there, but but by myself. Adding gravel to a black soil surface is one that's options. Um, I think the benefit of this is that it will require experienced local road builders and, and contractors to inform the process and then will be a very, very good tool and manual almost for the 
schedule for those roads. Not only, like, we think of the Blacksall area as, as east of, a, west of the line from here to, to Aramac and Blacksall roads in the east, uh, I live on one. So, um, you know, the benefit of, of a Blacksall road maintenance schedule would be Or, sorry, a schedule or a supervisor who hasn't had practically. Dedicated strategy for those roads, I think, will save us wasting the thousands of dollars we're. Support your point you made earlier, Brett, about perhaps not money off a road that doesn't need money being spent on it to those uh, desert roads to the north and east of Aramac that perhaps may require more substantial information grading more periodically. My thoughts on this point, councillors. Mr. Mayor. Road is how they grade them. So it's actually the grading that line there and, and um, yeah, we've got to go back to it and uh, inform a strategy but not yeah, we don't have to discuss it for the two hours right now. Mr Mayor, I'm uh, next oil roads give you a good running service but with your gravel roads it depends on the gravel. It does. It's gravel north of our bank that you've got a beautiful running service. The gravel that was put on the Ilfracam road is an ordinary running service. Number five. So this is about safety um, and installation. That's about not only a liability. Message to road users that um, it's not a highway. Roads, they're, they're not safe roads, so um, signs will be going up anyway. No concerns? Six. Um, six is um, to upgrade our rural road addressing signage to a consistent standard. Spoke about this, spoken about this. Um, signs on road so people know which property is on which road and safety. And that's probably the bar corner there is. Then the last one is um, in terms, once again, of, um, it sort of relates to about working away, but it's have to be done around the Matabara area to make sure. So, We're about to do an EBA. Right. Yes. I don't agree with this either. Staff, do they want to stay in Mudbury? Because I think there was an issue. Some of the staff, with the accommodation you previously had there. 
I see it as a sensible thing to do. If we're working over there, ones they're travelling, so I agree with it. We've had staff, um, truck drivers, and other staff operators from this depot work out of our and so they don't drive back and forth from Buck Hall to do it. The other thing that I would just suggest there, well, I'll ask the question, what are, you, uh, what are your thoughts on the accommodation? There is a motel. There, there's private accommodation. Okay, so you have a so whether we just put the roof over the time that the roofs are there. Um, there's also like B and B accommodations. Uh, don't have a spare house. Hotel accommodation come up in my mind immediately. Hopefully, you should know a week or a month or so in advance, a few weeks or a month in advance, so that those persons, uh, so that their motel uh, know that there's not going to be taken. Years now, and I'd like to keep on moving. Talking about it is is over a period of time. Have I um have a permanent permanent grader permanent grader crew? Absolutely. But this there's only seven nights a fortnight. There's only seven nights a fortnight. Why seven nights accommodation? Yeah. And and excuse me, Mr. Mayor, for butting in, but you can't afford. Nobody can afford to go and buy a building and and or we'll purchase a building for seven nights a fortnight. Well, even if you did seven seven nights a fortnight. And the thing about my telecommunication is a single individual. This would appear currently there is enough private meal providers, they get an allowance for that. Um, so perhaps that might assuage some of the concerns that was raised. Uh, Councillors, I'm mindful that I said we break the morning tea at 10.15, it's 10.19. Councillor Peoples, you expressed some concern about supporting only wording changes in item two. You've supported the rest. Do you want to propose an amendment so that perhaps you can support the resolution or are you happy to have expressed your concerns and support what's presented? No, I don't think I need an amendment, Mr. I just I wasn't on point two. Is. Something along the line. Sections of the Aramac Jericho Jericho travel uh, commencing from the Aramac end. What you've done is add gravel. No, so, and I'm saying problem sections. Yeah, yeah, right. Not the whole road. Are you back? No, we we're required. Sections. We take up the wind staged. Sections of the earth. Ceiling, sorry, back in front of Anne.
Of problem sections. Councillors, are you comfortable with the? In that case, we'll close this resolution out. Can somebody please move um, the recommendations with the amendment? I don't. Well, I don't believe the amendments or those. So we don't need to put our reasoning as to why. So I move up. Councillor Hanson, second of Councillor Plum. Those in favour? Five zero. Thank you. Great. Good morning, Chief. Ten twenty-two.